Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here from the Retro Future. Today, we're gonna to be doing a really cool refurb on an AGS 101 Graphite Game Boy Advance SP. So I picked this up on eBay for $33 and $8 shipping, which is $41 or 30 pounds. So 30 pounds is not too bad for something like this. I think it's actually about 32 pounds or something, but that's a pretty good deal if you ask me. AGS 101s in good condition or refurbished ones on eBay sell for over a hundred pounds sometimes, so I'm pretty happy with that. And I think it's gonna be quite a juicy repair. Not often do we actually delve into resoldering parts and, and fixing traces and stuff on the channel because a lot of the times Game Boys don't need this sort of stuff, but this one definitely does. So if we scroll down and read the description, it says, Nintendo Game Boy Advance SP system junk. Condition used for parts or parts or repair only. The console is missing the charger port. Also, it's not running or playing games well. There is no sound and screen looks, oh, there is sound and screen looks very good. No damage or dead pixels. That's funny because I tried to turn this on just before and there was no sound. Battery cover not included um, and also, nor is the battery. But what was included was a game called Mr. Nuts. So uh, I've got a battery right here. Let's plug it in. Obviously it is missing the charger port. And if we turn it on, volume's all the way up, no sound at all. The screen, however, does look very good. But yeah, it's not playing games at all. It's just a white screen, so that is not ideal. So uh, let's go ahead and open it up. I've got a few parts laid out in front of me uh, that is gonna help us hopefully with this uh, repair. One thing I should actually do just real quick is chuck a different game in there that I know works, which I'll be using my EverDrive and just make sure that it's not the dodgy handwritten label game that's broken. Nope, as you can see, nothing is showing on the screen. So that only leaves us with one thing to do and that's take it apart. So to take this apart, you will need a tri-wing screwdriver. There's one, two, three, four tri-wing screws there. Another tri-wing screw here. There would have been a Phillips screw here. There's a tri-wing screw there, and that is your lot. So, let's go. Well, I've already noticed one thing. There's a screw right here missing, which means that someone has definitely been in here before, which is never a good sign. Uh, and that does worry me slightly. Boom, there we go, okay. Buttons and stuff flying out. Right, well there is already, I can see just in this corner, some sort of an insect or the remains of an insect. That's gross, let's get that out. First things first, look, right here you can see the little water sticker has been tripped or the liquid uh, sticker there. So that means this thing has seen some liquid. Next up, what on earth has happened with these grounding pads here on the cartridge connector? They have been resoldered very terribly. So has the power switch. You can see all those awful dry solder joints down there which haven't actually sat down properly. There should be a capacitor here. And I know that because I've got another board right here that I've been comparing it to. Not just that, but the trace has been ripped up. So that's not good. And obviously, the charger port is completely missing. So, let's go a bit further inside this Game Boy and see what else is wrong with it. So there's uh, three Phillips screws on the motherboard. So I'll just go ahead and remove those. And then, to remove this safely, I recommend you flip the screen open and just sort of catch the, uh, the motherboard in your hand, like that. And then flip it back down, not the whole way, and then undo the latches on the ribbon cable, just like that. Hopefully you saw some of that there. And then you can safely remove it and you haven't damaged the screen. What we can do whilst we're here is just take this apart a little bit further. So if you flip up the ribbon cable underneath, it will expose a tiny little Phillips screwdriver bit. So we can just uh, remove the Phillips screw like that. And then this hinge cover will come off. This is in disgusting condition by the way like really really revolting let me show you can you see down the crevice there all the dirt and grime that's built up in there and also inside as well i'm so glad we've got a replacement shell for this to go into i won't spoil which one it is yet but 
And what we need to do now is remove these little uh, covers, these little rubber covers. Now I'm not going to be too precious with this shell because ultimately it's pretty ruined anyway and I am going to be replacing it. But I will show you how to remove these little rubber covers uh, so that you avoid damaging your Game Boy. So you take your flat head screwdriver bit and with your pressure moving towards the center of the rubber piece, move the bit around in a sort of a circular motion, but make sure that your pressure is going forwards because if your pressure is going down or towards you, you're gonna scratch the plastic. It's quite hard because the Game Boy is not a great color to be uh, showing you how to do this, but essentially you just need to move the screwdriver bit down and flick forwards and there we go. Absolutely no damage to the shell whatsoever, nor is there any damage at all to the little rubber cover. So yeah, it's very hard art to do, but pressure forwards at all times. But that's all gonna go out the window because this shell is getting replaced and it's absolutely ruined anyway, so I don't really care. Again, once you've got all of those off, Phillips screw bit, and uh, just remove the five Phillips screws around the screen. Hopefully, I can't actually see that there's any damage to these screws that would indicate someone's been in here before. So I'm really hoping we've just got ourselves a solid AGS 101 screen, uh, which I will be happy with because there was no, uh, no issues on the screen itself. And then we can just lift off this lid like that. And yeah, hey, okay, awesome. So it's an official AGS 101 screen. It looks like it is slightly stuck down, probably with all the crud and stuff in there. And we can just um, gently pull it out. And yeah, I'm happy with that, I think. Oh, oh dear God, okay. Things took a turn for the worst quite quickly. Can you see that liquid there? That's not a good sign. Ideally, I want to keep this screen lens because it's going to be far more higher quality uh, than the aftermarket one and also it's going to be really nice and centered. So I'll probably just keep this as it is and give it a nice clean. Hopefully it will clean up well. But let's turn our attention now to the motherboard. Now, as I said, I have got another motherboard, an AGS-101 motherboard, uh, which is actually in need of some work itself because it's also missing parts. So I got this on eBay. I think for about five pounds. I can't even remember how long I've had this for, but it's missing the charging port there. Uh, it's also had a few things resoldered on it, but I do know that it works very well. So looking at the state of this and the fact that that trace is lifted up, I'm sure you'll all probably, oh my God, wait, what? There's a whole chip missing. There's a whole chip. Well, that's not going to help it. Look, there's a whole bloody chip missing. Okay, well, there's no way I'm going to be able to resolder that. And that would make no sense for me to pull that off. So it says there that the chip is SRAM. Um, but there is two chips on this thing because this little switch here determines whether or not the game is from a Game Boy Advance or a Game Boy Color or DMG. So potentially they've removed either the one that plays the Game Boy Advance games or the one that plays the original Game Boy games because it's not emulation, it's actually got a hardware chip to deal with those games. So, okay, I'm not sure what to do here really. I mean, we don't need any parts from this one. I think the only thing we need is just the charging port, which I ordered a replacement of anyway, which is like two pounds. So I'm pretty certain the best thing to do would be to just fix up this motherboard. If you flip it over as well, there's a bunch of silk screen removed here and also a really dark area there, which is probably um, another bit of silk screen that's been lifted up because there's corrosion underneath. So uh, that and the fact that there's some sort of a liquid on this screen probably means that this has been damaged by water. So this whole chip here is slightly skew -if. Can you see that there? It's like not flush and I'm looking at it and some of the pins look very, very bridged. I'll get a close up of that and uh, show you on the screen there. So this is destroyed. I'm gonna hang on to it though, because one day when, I, uh, when I'm really, really good at repairs, I will be able to fix this. So what we're gonna do is put this charging port on this Game Boy. I'm gonna go over some of these solder points as well, because I think um, whoever used this before has probably balls it up a little bit. So we can just reflow it all and uh, put this new charging port on and hopefully we'll be good to go.
So the first thing I'm going to do is clean the whole area with some isopropyl alcohol. Then I'll apply some flux to the pads and then put some fresh solder on. Now annoyingly the replacement charger port I ordered turned out to be the wrong one. I thought I just had to bend the legs and it would work but they just didn't even line up. I did have another one however in my parts bin so that worked fine. I started off by soldering the ground pins either side. They're sort of going to act as like an anchor point for when we solder the individual pins on the back. So I put some fresh flux and some solder on the back of those just to make sure that the ground connection was really good. You don't really want to mess with power. And then I used a needle nose pair of tweezers to push the pins down as I soldered them onto the pads. Now the next thing to do was just go over the entire motherboard which was an absolute mess and clean the whole thing up. So I used more flux and more fresh solder and just went over the whole board. After all of that was done, I cleaned it all up with some more isopropyl alcohol and now it's time to take this opportunity to clean the shoulder buttons. Take off the two little rubber caps with some tweezers, drop some isopropyl alcohol inside and used a bit of compressed air just to spray it around. And then you can go ahead and put the black caps back on. After that, it was time to give everything a test. Now, obviously this motherboard is different from the old one. So things like the speaker not working and the games not being read are not really gonna be issues. But I did take this opportunity to clean the cartridge that was included with some isopropyl alcohol and in turn, that will also clean the pins. And turning everything on, it obviously works absolutely fine. And so does the sound. Now the rest of the job is really just a case of giving everything a clean, so I'm not gonna go through this whole part with a voiceover, so just sit back and enjoy the music. Oh yeah, I am so happy with how this has turned out. What an absolute treat of a little experience that was for me. Obviously there's gonna be some upset people, which I'm prepared for, uh, who are gonna be annoyed that I didn't fix this board, but it made absolutely no sense at all to desolder a working uh, chip from a working motherboard and put it onto here when the entire motherboard is suffering from some water damage anyway. The speaker wasn't working, the games were intermittent. I didn't even get them to work, but it said on the listing that he just they just weren't running well, I think he said. So it didn't make a lot of sense. I still had to do 
what I thought I was buying this to do in the first place, which was replace the charging connector. Here is a charger right here, and I can absolutely reassure you that my new charging port works absolutely fine, as you can see, so I'm not worried about uh, charging. Very happy with the overall result. I've got my little EverDrive in here, and it's quite fitting. I've been playing quite a lot of Pokemon Ruby, and now I have a Pikachu Game Boy. Speaker obviously works fine. The screen is gorgeous. I honestly love uh, the AGS-101 screen. There's just something about it. I know the IPS display is very nice, and you can get that now, but it's something about having the pixels and seeing those pixels is a little bit more nostalgic for me. After all, this is the Game Boy that I grew up playing. Here are my other AGS 101s. I've started a bit of a, a hoard of them now. I've got an original one in the middle. This is the tribal one. Uh, I got this for about 20 pounds, actually not that long ago, but it only needed a small clean, so I didn't think it was worth a whole video on it. Uh, and then this one is an original, they're, they're all official original AGS 101s. They've just had the shells replaced. This is the, uh, the transparent one. Very nice, or translucent really. And then this is the Super Famicom version. So yeah, I really like AGS 101s, uh, as you can probably tell. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Goodbye.